Hello, Sillaholics, and welcome to Sillaholics Anonymous. I am Shakia. If this is your first time here and you've never viewed any of my content, I do hope that you enjoyed the contents of this video and will choose to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you are notified whenever I release new content. If you are a subscriber, a subscriber thank you for the support and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to design the custom face mask or coverings and how to create your own template from masks that you don't necessarily have a printable pattern for. So maybe you ordered masks via, um, you know, ready to ship sites, via a buy-in, and all you have is that actual mask. I'm going to show you how to create a template for that so that you can really customize it and you don't have to do just regular old backgrounds and, you know, you can't customize it, things like that, all right? So let's go ahead, jump right into this. The mask that I am going to be using for this video um, came from Silky Sock. I think they're like in round nine right now as far as shipping, but this is where this one came from. It's already ready for you as far as the picture is concerned. So you just go to their site. You're gonna go where it says wholesale. You're gonna click on templates and then you'll go to the file that has the face mask and you're going to download the image. They have like a Photoshop. If you're using Photoshop, you can use that. They have a PDF one. You don't need those. Download the image. That way you can use it even if you have the free version of Silhouette Studio. Then you're going to go file open or file merge to be able to open that up in Silhouette Studio. If you're not using one from Silky Sock um, or yours doesn't look like this because you might be able to use this template if yours you know, somewhat looks like it, what you will do is make your own picture of that you can upload one of two ways. If you have a printer that has a scanner or maybe you have just a regular scanner, you would take your mask, put it down and put a white, I mean, I'm sorry, a black sheet of paper over the top of it, close the scanner bed down and scan it to either a USB drive or directly to your computer, depending on how your fax machine works. If it's the kind that has like that black outline around it, you don't have to put paper on it because that black is going to trace very well in Silhouette Studio. Or if you don't have a scanner, you can put it down on like black fabric or um, a black uh, piece of cardstock and take a picture of it. Try to get directly over it. No flash in a well lit area. Try not to be somewhere where there's a light right above you because it will cast a shadow and that's going to affect how it traces. We want to have, you know, a, a strong contrast and, you know, separation between what's black and what's white. So no kind of in between with the grays and too many shadows. Once you get your picture, you're going to bring it into Silhouette Studio by either sending it to yourself from your phone to Messenger, open it up on your computer in Messenger, copy and paste. Um, you can connect your phone to your computer and then go file merge or file open to bring that into Silhouette Studio, or you can email it to yourself, download it, and then be able to open it. But once you have it on your screen, you are going to trace it. You have the straps there. If you trace it all together, you're gonna have um, a bit of a time separating uh, the straps and then doing your edit points. I'm gonna show you a way to eliminate the, the strap parts and you have just the mask. So you're gonna come over here to the rectangle tool and you're gonna make a small box. Doesn't have to be super big. You're then going to fill that box with black and then turn the line color off. You're then gonna make duplicates of it. Quickest way, hold down Alt, click on it and drag. Or you can right click and choose duplicate. Or you can hold down Control and if you were doing four, let's say this is the first one I made, I can just go with the down arrow, one, two, three, four. So I'll have, well, I did five of them. So you would have four of the boxes. As long as you have four, doesn't matter which method you use to create the four. Then you're going to drag over those four boxes, hover your mouse over one of them, right click and choose bring to front to make sure that's in the front of here. Click off. You're gonna start with one of the squares, bring it over on top of the picture. And we're going to rotate it just so that it sits flat right there. Then we're going to take this one and cover up this side. And then the bottom one and rotate. And then 
this one. And let's bring this over. You know, so we've masked off the straps. I'm going to take this one up just a little bit. Okay, now that we have those straps kind of cut off, we're going to go over to our trace tool, select trace area, put our box around it. Doesn't have to go over the whole thing, didn't even have to go out this far. You're going to then hit trace. We're going to move the original out of the way, move the trace so that we can get rid of our little boxes, or you can just simply move them off to the side just in case you'll need them again. And you're going to fill it with color. Oops, let's all make sure you select it and then fill it with color. Just makes it easier to select it um, in the next step. Then you're going to right click and release compound path. Once you do that, you're going to hold down shift click on the inside piece and delete everything else around it. Now, for this particular one, um, I copied their measurements. So it is, for the hexagon, eight inches wide. It should be about four and a half inches tall. So we're going to click on that and, oh, not bad as far as where it was. You're going to click on the shape, make sure that the lock is closed, and for, you can either change the width or the height. We're going to make the width eight. And so it's saying that our height with making that eight is only about 4.217. We wanna make sure that we cover all of it. So let's go and change our height to 4.5 instead. If it goes, oops, not 45, <laughs> 4.5. And it's going to make it where the mask is a little bit wider, but it's better for it to be wider on the sides than it is to not have the correct height, right? Now that you have that, we're going to put a small offset. The top and bottom might be a little bit off. And then of course this is a picture. So, you know, it can be a little bit off. What we want to do is we're going to go over to our offset, hit offset and put a bleed on it. You can choose for this to be whatever size you want. It can be where it's a um, 1.25 inches all the way around. If you feel more comfortable with having a half an inch, I mean a quarter of an inch all the way around. That is personal preference that is totally up to you as far as how much of a bleed area you create for yourself. All right, and we're gonna hit apply. Now, if you really, really want to make this match you're gonna put a bleed area over it anyway. If you wanna make sure that your outsides don't go out too far, I mean, you can bring in your sides and unlock it and make it, like force it to four and a half by eight if you want to, but the shape of it may be a little bit, you know, different. You can also print this out and kind of see if you need to make any adjustments to it. If you just print it out, um, uh, fill it with color, print it out, put your mask to it and see where it sits at. But with this, it should be fine. We are still, we are also putting a, an offset on it. This middle one now becomes your, the edge of your mat. It's your restrictive area. It is the area that you want to avoid, you know, anything important that you don't want to get cut off. You know, if you have a picture there, you don't want it to cut off their eyes. You'll make sure that it's underneath. If you have text and you're adding it to it, you don't want it to be too close to the edge and cut off. So with this one, I'm going to take the line color, take the fill color away and I'm gonna make my line a dash line. That just lets me know that's the edge. I'm gonna fill my background to the offset that I created. You can choose to use, like fill it with, flood it with color. You can do it with the gradient from Silhouette Studio. You can fill it with a pattern that's saved to your patterns from Silhouette Studio, or you can copy and paste from the web a pattern that you want to use. So let's go over here. And let's use this one this time. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and copy image. We're going to bring it over to Silhouette Studio and paste. All right. I'm going to stretch this to where it goes the length of the 
template, send it to the back just to kind of check the placement of it. All right, I may be cool with it right there. I'm going to drag and select. Oh, before I do that, I do recommend once you have your template, save it before you start doing anything else. Um, you can just select it, go file, save selection, save to hard drive or to your library. I prefer the hard drive. And you're going to save that as, so let's say, you know, it says face mask, um, hexagon. I'm going to go ahead and put, so I know like where it came from, silky socks. And then I would save it to my desktop, my, you know, documents, pictures. If you have a specific folder, you're just going to save it there. That way you have that one. And every time that you want to create a new design, you know, you can open up that template that's just blank and then you can start to design. And we're gonna go ahead and put this right here. All right, you're going to drag and select the background and that first layer, that outside layer, and we're going to go to modify and crop. Now we have our pattern in there. And then you can do whatever else you want to it. If you want to add a name to it, add a business logo to it, you wanna add pictures to it, you can do that as well. I'm going to go ahead and go file merge. We're going to just take this Spider-Man picture that sits at the top um, and place him in here or it can be someone's picture. Let's see. Spidey should be over yonder somewhere. There he is. So we're just going to make him really big. So let's say I wanted to crop him down to here. I will click on the background, hold down Alt, click it and bring it to the front. So that's going to copy it directly to the front. You're going to remove the color. So click on the fill pattern, go to the hash box. That's to remove the color. Don't click off. Just hold down Shift and click on your image. Come back over here to modify and then crop. So now he's going to be cropped to the edge. Now, remember, this is the outside edge. What you will actually see is going to be, I'm going to do this one just that you can see the part that you're actually going to see once you, um, you know, sublimate it. So I'm going to go crop. So this is really all you will actually see. The outside is the bleed area. So if you want a specific area to be seen, you would undo the crop and then readjust it. All right. And then you can add your text and things like that. So hopefully this helped you um, understand how you can create your own custom designs within these masks and for ones that are pre pre sewn together for you. If you are trying to cut and sew it yourself and sublimate it, there is a video. The link for it will flash at the end of this one, or you can just go to the playlist here on my channel. Um, give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment with any um, suggestions or if you have any questions if you're on Facebook visit me over there I have a Facebook page Silaholics Anonymous and I do live Q&A's Monday Wednesday and Fridays I also have my Facebook group Silaholics Anonymous Silhouette Help so if in between videos you know you have questions join the group and post your questions there all right guys until next time have a great one